I love these spirals. I have watched them for far longer than I should. Uh, this is the demonstration of phyllotaxis and how seed heads are build themselves in sunflower heads, for example. It's a very classic demonstration, um, and I'm going to show you in this video how I built this jojoba file. Oh, look, there we are at 0.8. And if you know what I mean by 0.8 uh, of a turn, what just happened there when something nice happened or something simple happened, uh, we're going we're gonna to get, get to that. Uh, but just, I'm just, just going to stare at it for a while. Now, let's build the thing. Now, I first built this a long time ago, and I didn't build it in the same way that I'm going to do now because I found more efficient ways of doing it. So I'm going to show you a super efficient way. Uh, if we've got time at the end, maybe I'll discuss the way I originally did it, which does have some advantages still. First up, we're going to build some seeds. And a reminder, we're going to build um, them by thinking about them as points at a certain distance from the origin. And uh, we're going to talk about the angle you grow each seed. So let me show you a Jojoba window that we're going to start with. It's just Jojoba Classic 5. Again, I prefer the Classic download because you can move uh, windows around and undock things, which I'll probably do during this build. Um, two basic variables we're going to need. One is the number of seeds I'm going to try and model, which I'm going to call a capital N. It's like the maximum number of seeds. So let's just put a slider in for that, which is going to be an integer. Capital N. I'll let it go up to a decent figure, like 200. We might try and crank that up super high later on, but let's just get it working smoothly for a lower number first. And the other crucial thing is the angle, um, or rather the fraction of a turn. So reminder, we're going to uh, uh, we're going to start in the origin. Maybe I'll move the the, uh, the center of the screen into the center, and we're going to grow a seed somewhere, and then we're going to grow another seed uh, after turning a bit. Now, if you turn not at all, you grow another seed in that direction. You grow another seed in that direction. You're going to grow out a line of seeds. Now, a real flower would grow out a seed in the center and push whatever's already there further out. We're not going to do that. It's just easier to simulate this by putting each seed a little bit further out than the last one. Uh, in the real world, like they, they jostle around for space and they become efficient by the work they're doing that. We're going to force uh, the position and the angle by growing seeds further out. You see what I mean? Uh, so however many seeds we've got, um, I'm going to grow each seed at a distance away from the origin of the square root of its number. Uh, so the first one will be one and the second one will be at root two away from the origin and it will be a little bit further around based on the the fraction of a turn it's turned so we do need the variable for a fraction of a turn and i'm going to call that a turn it's not an angle i would like it to be how much of a full turn so that zero means don't turn one means turn all the way 360 so a half in this number would be half a turn which feels like the best way to describe this you hey you could put between zero and 360 but then We've got our arbitrary uh, angle decisions. Now, this is super sensitive. So when you do stop plotting these seeds, you saw some nice spirals happening. This needs to change a very small amount at a time. So I'm going to make this increment as, as small as I can really do it. I don't know how precise Jojoba will let me work here, but let's try. I'm going to, I'm going to put like 10 to the negative 7. Seems to do that okay. Um, and you can see it's not doing anything yet. I can just drag this around, but you can't see the precision it's doing it. And if I press on my arrow key to move it, it is changing, but you can't see it because it's moving so slowly and it's not displaying the full precision there. So I'm going to just put the rounding up. Now, Jojo works, I think, to full precision in the background all the time. That rounding command just changes what you see. That's all it's doing. And now you can see when I use my arrow keys, it is changing by that last decimal place. Um, very useful tip. I didn't know this for a long time. If I press the arrow key, it goes up. But if you press shift in the arrow key, uh, it goes up slightly smaller. So it's a fine control. Uh, if you hold down control, uh, it goes up slightly quicker than the increment. And if you hold down alt, it goes up even quicker. So actually, just by holding down one of those modifier keys, you get better control with the keyboard of a slider. And that's great when your increment is tiny and you might want to drag it a long way, but not use a mouse. Anyway, you get the idea. I'll just leave these uh, somewhat random settings. And I'm going to build all the seeds with one command. I'm going to use the sequence command which is a really great command for building uh, sequences. And you can build sequences of numbers, right? But you can also build a sequence of any Jojoba expression, which is the version I've highlighted here. So I'm going to hit return. It populates the uh, the arguments for me. And this time, my expressions are going to be points. They're going to be polar coordinates points. Um, and in Jojoba, a polar coordinate, a normal coordinate looks like that with a comma, exactly as you might expect. But a polar coordinate, use a semicolon instead of a comma. And it knows the to expect a distance and an angle. And I'm gonna, maybe I'll do this kind of backwards. I'm going to have a dummy variable, which is just going to work from zero up to the capital N here. Um, I don't know if I want the zero or not. We'll think about that in a bit. So that's going to work through all the seeds. And each seed is going to be a distance of the square root of whatever index we're on. 
Um, actually, if you're paying attention and you know anything about spirals, that means we're going to plot an Euler spiral. Maybe I'll talk about spirals on another video quite happily sometime, um, where the distance away is proportional to the square root of its uh, sort of term number or whatever. This is going to approximate Euler spirals. And the angle of each seed, I want to depend on that turn variable. So uh, each one is going to be like the index multiplied by the angle. So let's do the turn thing that we almost done it already. Uh, multiplied by a full turn which is 2 pi so that this now this turn variable is a fraction of the full turn but i want that to sort of increment so use the uh, the dummy variable it's already done some nice spirals for me so it's looking promising press return and let's just check the variables work uh, i'm going to press escape a few times and it's always worth um as a i clicked on the screen too much if i press escape you should jump back to the move tool here like that uh, and so i'm hovering over the escape button all the time when i'm working in jojo to be honest now if i drag the turn Yay, these things move around. And it's already looking nice. What I think I need to see is more seed. So let's just try cranking this up. Should we go all the way to 200? And let's try the turn thing. Oh. Now, I think I need to zoom out. The strange quirk here is because like, I'm using a dot for each seed. Those dots, are some they're not actual size. They're just that size on the screen. If I zoom out, they stay that size, but they're getting bunched together. And so maybe that's better, but they're kind of a bit packed together. Later on, I think what I might do is build circles on each of those dots and have a radius slider so I can control the size of the seeds. I can hide the dots then. But that's for later. Let's get this working first because what I really want to see is how these seeds arrange themselves. And maybe I need more seeds, but we'll just leave it as it is for now. If I animate this, which is kind of the goal here, it's moving really quickly. Now it's moving smoothly-ish. Like you can see the dots moving in the middle. They're not sort of jumping, which is good, but it's too quick. I want to see this happen a bit more slowly. And the increment uh, that I adjusted right at the beginning controls how much when you press um, the arrow key, it will change. But actually, I want to control the speed, and that's a different setting. And this is slightly arbitrary in JoJoBro. So I open some properties here. And this pops out a window. By the way, you can dock that window uh, over there. But I don't often like doing that because you forget to close it. And actually, when you don't close that window, some bugs happen. Uh, but I'm, So I'm going to pop this out so I remember to close it. It does mean you can't quite see what's going on. However, any slider has a minimum maximum and increment which you set when you start it up but in the background uh, you can set the speed and this is somewhat arbitrary it's not in any units that i can come up with as far as i can tell uh, approximately means and we can we can leave this running maybe while it's in the background uh, one complete cycle from min to max takes about 10 seconds when you run it at speed one and maybe in post-processing i'll add the timer to see if that's actually true i haven't checked that i want it to go slower so i'm actually going to make it 10 times slower by going 0.1 in there and you can see that it's already moving more slowly and maybe that's slow enough but i could go even slower if i wanted to and later on another upgrade i could do is maybe i could make a slider to control that speed that sounds like it would be fun let's do that later as well that's nice and slow you can see this number is not changing very quickly it's 0.62 and it will remain at 0.62 for ages close to something important that number anyway uh oh we hit uh at one two three we hit some maybe a fifth no, no we hit a nice rational fraction there the point is it's moving slowly enough so the combination of the speed and the increment are important to get the smooth animation here um, and smoothness matters the frames per second which gamers really care about uh, makes things feel realistic and if this jumps too much uh, if you, if I make the increment too too big, if I delete some of these zeros, you see that this is not really... Well, first of all, it's taking ages to get to the next one, and it's not creating this illusion of animation. Maybe I need the speed to go quite a lot higher, right, uh, to actually see this. So let's let do that. Um, and tiny changes create a big effect, and so this is actually losing all of its subtlety. I just want to undo all those things I did, and I hope I've got that back to where it was. Nope. Uh, let's put the increment back to the... All of them. And it is nice and slow. Let's just check the animates as I want it to. Yeah, nice and slow. Right, what else do we need to do here? I think I want to do some aesthetics because it does matter. We don't really need the coordinate grid. Shortcuts to turn them off. and That is gone. I think I'm going to make the background black. It's going to make my sliders disappear. Never mind. Background color is here. Let's, let's Maybe very dark gray is helpful so I don't lose things completely. You can see, you can just about see the sliders up there. Uh, so let's grab them. Right click and drag, by the way, lets you select things. Um, so let's just make them white and I can see them better. The seeds aren't standing out enough, so let's make them... Ah, let's try blue. That's nice. I, I quite like that. And I think I probably want to zoom out a bit. And what I'd really like to do is see if I can crank out the number of seeds to... Oh, it's looking nicer when I zoom out, isn't it? Let's crank out the number of seeds. 
So let's change the maximum we can get for n up to, I don't know, see if it will go to a thousand without worrying. Now, Dojo is not the most efficient program, but the flexibility you get from just being able to build it with one line and tinker with sliders is why I'm doing this. You could get a much smoother animation by coding this in a decent programming language. But let's see if we can, if Dojo will cope up to, should we go all the way? Yeah. It's nice. It's still relatively smooth. You can see the, uh, the middle dots aren't moving in a jumpy way. And we get some, the outer dots because it is, it's lots of iterations. They're moving really quickly each time. Uh, and you can see we're about to hit three quarters. You can see the four in the denominator of three quarters dominating everything. We're not even close to three quarters. 0 0.75, 0 0.746, 0 0.7489, and three quarters there. Uh, we've got some weird artifacts there. The outlines of these dots were blurring together. So let's do a couple of aesthetic improvements. I'll zoom in a little bit so we're filling the screen nicely. Let's stop the animation. Uh, first of all, that's quite a nice arrangement there. Um, I've I've built this a lot, and I still just get hypnotized watching this thing move around. I'm going to build a circle on each one of these points. And that's actually going to be relatively easy, but I want to control those circles radius with a slider. So let's build a slider called R. I don't really know how big it needs to be. Let's try it at one, and we'll, we'll make it go up in small amounts so we can control it neatly. Oh, it's going to make it black. So let's just make that white so we can see it. And I, I'm going to use the zip command. The zip command is great to take any list that you've made, and all those dots are just one list, and it will, it will run through that list. So the zip command takes an expression and uses some variable from another list which you'll specify. So I'm going to say, draw a circle at a point P, and it's going to get those P's from a list I'll specify in a minute. I'm, I use double letters usually to just remind myself that I'm doing an index there. Uh, you need to make sure you haven't got a point called P, otherwise it would try and multiply P's together there. The radius I like to use R, which is the number I've just put on the slider there. And I want to get the P's from list L1, which it called itself earlier. Delete all the rest. And there they are. Oh, they're green. Hmm. Uh, well, fine. They seem to be working, and I can change the size of them. Let's just get the move tool back. Uh, and there they go. They're small and large. Let's hide the original list, which was nice blue, but maybe I can make my circles blue. I quite like that blue. Nice, and then I can make sure they don't overlap. And these are an actual size, they don't change. So if I zoom in, I can see more of the seeds, and I think they are nicely not overlapping. They probably would overlap on some configurations, but at least I've got some control now. And let's just leave it about there. Maybe I could fill them in. So this is uh, there's an opacity slider uh, underneath the color, so I could make them actually blue. Yeah, that's nice. Maybe they need to be a touch smaller. But now I've got the control, that's better. Let's check the animation is still working. Maybe, and I can actually build some animation tools as well, but at the moment there's a little button here. Um, if other sliders had been animated, that button would play all of them. But yeah, that's working all right. I feel like I'm losing some of the smoothness, but it's working all right. Let's also then build a, a way of animating this neatly. So I'm going to stop the animation here. I'm going to use a checkbox. I'm going to, this is typically used to hide or show things. So when you build one, it says, uh, write a caption and then select objects at which you want this to show or hide things. Now I'm not actually going to use this to show or hide things. So I'm just going to do nothing there. And maybe I'll, I'll make the caption called animate. And you'll see why I'm going to do that in a moment. Ugh, it's black. This is the danger of having a dark background that unless you change the default colors, you're always going to have to keep doing this which is maybe quite often why I make a separate graphics window, graphics two, to put sliders and things on. Anyway, that's there. It doesn't do anything at the moment. Uh, it's just what they call a Boolean value. Um, normally, I, I ooh, didn't want to do that. If you drag these windows around, they do move around, and that's slightly messed things still. There we go. Um, in the algebra view, I normally arrange things by object type, and you can see that they've got little names for it. It's a Boolean value, trues or falses. There's a couple of lists, and there's some numbers. It's a very simple build so far, which is nice. But let us look at this Boolean value, uh, which is this true or false tick box. And I can actually do a tiny bit of scripting in Jojibra. And maybe this is a good introduction to the world of scripting. Uh, in the scripting property of anything, you can say, do something on update. And the script this uses is Jojibra script, uh, which is a fancy way of saying it's just a bunch of Jojibra commands. So anything you could type into the input bar, you could type here, and it'll work through them. You can go into JavaScript. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Another day. Um, and that's why there's a global JavaScript thing going on here. In this case, though, when uh, that tick box gets updated, I want to do something with the animation. And actually, there's a command called start animation. I wish the scripting auto completed for me. Uh, it doesn't, unlike the input box. Anyway, start animation takes two variables. To which thing do you want to start? Uh, and it's the 
variable called turn I want that to start and I want it to uh, be true or false and that true or false will be the same as the boolean tick box so that is currently called a it's just written over here maybe I should have named it something better but this command says start animation turn a and currently a is false so it would be not starting the animation or stopping it if it was and then when you change it it should update it that's how scripting works uh, let's check it works if I click this we get animation and if I unclick it and at least that tick sort of corresponds with the word animate. Animate, yes, ticked, not animate, not ticked. Uh, so that's a neat way to do the tick box. And I think the rest of this, we, we, maybe uh, in the second part, I'll show you how I originally built it. But let's just finally just talk about what we can see here. So dragging this around, uh, the last thing I should maybe build is an easy way to change the, the actual number in here. Now, you can always do that by double clicking on it over here. You can go and type that in. But if you wanted to happen on screen, there is a way to do this. Occasionally is a bit unstable. Let's, you know, I haven't tidied things up here. I'm, I'm making an input box. Uh, I'm not going to put a caption in. Uh, and it says once a linked object. Now that's really long for some reason. That's because <laughs> uh, the lists that I've got here are, are super long. I know it's off the screen for you. Uh, I'm just going to drag this back on. Or oh, maybe make this. Yeah, I'm going to choose the linked object to be the turn. Now you can't quite see me do that, but that says turn equals 0.3. And now you can see it over there. And now we've got an input box, which is annoyingly not visible. It turns into an auxiliary object. Uh, there it is, input box. I'm going to actually change its properties. Okay, its color, make its background color white, because I think it's actually transparent. And that's why you can see it. There it is. And I'm going to get rid of the caption. Don't show the label. It's just a box to type something in. But this is connected to the turn value. So if I put in 0.4, it changes to 0.4 if I put in 0.5 we get this and you can start to see how different fractions in here do different things um if I do uh oh, wait, one, one other thing here this is a symbolic input box if I do 1 over 10 it leaves it as 1 over 10 I think I'd actually like to see that as a decimal so in its properties in advanced now in algebra I'm going to turn it off being symbolic and it'll just work in decimals so now actually if I do uh, three sixths, it will turn it into a half as a decimal, which is kind of what I want because cancelling fractions down is important here. But I can type in other numbers. Uh, so, for example, one over the square root of two is definitely irrational. And lo and behold, it makes quite a, an efficient arrangement. Watch the number file video if you're not sure what's going on here. One over pi, by the way, definitely irrational but not as irrational as some other numbers because it's not very efficient. In fact, there's a couple of approximations to pi visible there. There's a three and then there's a 22 round here. Have a think about that. And the, the reason why this demo really sort of exists is if you put a certain number in here, you're going to get the most efficient packing. Square root of five minus one all over two. That is 0.618. Uh, this is a golden ratio of a turn or a golden angle. It's about 137.5 degrees. Not exactly though definitely an irrational number uh, and you can see that this packing is super efficient uh, and any other packing is less efficient and that's provable watch the number file video if you like that I'm just showing you how I built the demonstration um, I still could just watch this for ages and it's not changing quickly I could control the speed I did promise I'd do that so let's do one other little aesthetic thing before I leave you I'm going to make another slider to control the speed of the animation let's call it speed uh, let's set it going between not zero because it will stop but very small to I don't know up to 0.1 uh, and in a small increment let's do that this won't do anything yet because it's just a slider make sure we can see it but then I can make the turn thing which is controlling all the animation its property on its speed I could just put the variable I call speed uh, it was a slight surprise to me realize you can put variables in there, but Jojo does work like this. So everything is nested in variables within variables. And now if I make this animate, it will go at that speed and I can slow it right down to really slow there or speed it up there. And maybe I'll change the maximum min of that speed thing to make it more. So that, that's all the aesthetic decisions, but that's quite important to make the point here because if you don't see this move smoothly, you don't really get the impression. Hey, we're, we're about to approach two sixth, uh, two thirds, 0.6666. We go, and you can see the denominator of three in two thirds dominating everything already in the middle. And when we hit exactly, two, I'm going to wait for it. When we hit exactly two thirds, we'll get three spokes. Just about. Nice. And then it's gone. This is really fun to play with. I can literally watch it all day uh, if I'm not too careful. The last thing I'm going to do is go back to the particularly nice value of the square root of five, negative one, all over two. And let's see if we can make the number of seeds even more. I, I, I'm not confident that the animation, if I crank this up to 10,000, let's see. 
what's happening. Uh, so I've got to slide it up there and we'll see if we can get a glimpse. Yeah. I suspect if I animate this. Yeah, it's not smooth anymore. It's doing so much thinking. It's just really not very efficient, but zooming out and you can get, see all sorts of visual artifacts happening. It's nice to sort of fill the screen there. And I will actually just to leave you uh, with that original golden ratio return there. Um, it's quite interesting to see the sort of spirals going both ways. That's a sign that we've got some efficient packing, that it's not spiraling in any spokes. They're kind of nesting. And if you look at a real sunflower head, uh, then you'll see this sort of arrangement. The only other thing I wanted to show you is how I originally built this file when I was in the tinkering mode trying to come up with a way of doing it. And I didn't use the single command. That's usually the way you don't find the most efficient way to start with. I actually used a spreadsheet, which is built into GeoGebra and worth showing you because it adds a tiny bit of flexibility, even though it has some disadvantages. The spreadsheet's always there from the view command. That's why I've moved my face over to this side, though, so you can see it better. And you can just make it bigger if you like. Uh, I'm going to delete all the points I've built with the previous method. They're all gone. All my variables are there and I can use some of them still. I'm not going to use n for the number of seeds, though. I'm just going to actually create um, a point in the spreadsheet for each seed. So first of all, I'm going to number the points. I'm going to create a uh, column of the, the seed numbers. And just like any spreadsheet, you can click on it to reference it. That formula is now just going to count all the way up to whatever I drag this down to. Uh, let's go up to 100, but I could drag beyond, and that's how I get more seeds. So there's a number in my seeds, and this one I'm going to make a little bit bigger so we can see the formula. The nice thing about GeoGebra spreadsheet is that you don't just put numbers in, like I did in column A, you can put objects in there. So I'm going to put a point in each cell in column B, uh, a polar coordinate point, and it's going to appear on the screen. Let's just do the first one. Uh, so... The semicolon reminds it that it's a polar coordinate. I would like the distance to be the square root of the cell A1, because that's the seed number. Could have clicked on it. Um, occasionally that bugs out. It's weird. Anyway, uh, and the angle I need is the same as before. The turn parameter I've got on the screen already. Uh, that's the fraction of the full turn, so I need the full turn there. And then I want it to be the seed number mm. to keep it iterating, and that is uh, the, the cell A1 again. Uh, and there's a point, it's kind of on the screen, it's labeled at B1, so a couple of things, I'm going to select the whole column B, uh, turn off the labels, and let's make its color a little bit more visible. Hey, let's go red this time, make it look different from before. And I just want to copy that formula down in your sort of spreadsheet skills. You could just drag it or double click that box, and there we go. All those seeds have turned up down to 100, uh, and they are fully variable still, so they depend on that variable because I've built them like that. Um, so it's working, but if I want more seeds now, I can't just slide N because that N is not controlling anything in the spreadsheet, I just have to drag these down further. And the formula should copy down, hopefully. Yeah, it's built some more seeds there and highlighted them. Uh, so that is that, that it's clunkier uh, because it's not one command and it's populated a whole bunch of these auxiliary objects over here. These are auxiliary objects. You wouldn't normally see them because I've turned auxiliary objects on. Yeah, but they're, they're, it's kind of messy. Uh, the one advantage, though, is that you can now treat each of these, uh, the, the, they're individual objects, they're not buried in a list, which means you can control their properties. So what you could do uh, is make their, say, their color depend on the seed number. Uh, and that, it, you, basically, you've got a lot more fine control over individual points. If you want to make colors change or other properties of these objects change as you work down the list, uh, you could make another column which has a thing which depends on the, the point it's next to, but is a new object. So there's more flexibility to do some funky stuff, but it is a less efficient way of programming, and I much prefer doing it in one eye. I thought I'd show you anyway, because the spreadsheet is a really powerful tool, particularly to iterate things that are sort of self-referential, which means you can't get them into a sequence command. And we'll use that probably in a, in a Mandelbrot set example sometime soon. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, happy Jojba building, and see you next time.